A skillet, high heat, and a thin cut of meat or fish are the keys to sautéing, one of the quickest cooking methods for serving dinner in no time at all. Today's lesson on sautéing chicken piccata, wiener schnitzel, and sole a la meunière will teach you the technique of dredging for a crispy golden exterior, the importance of cooking over the proper temperature, and how a pan sauce can be the ideal finishing touch. So we're going to start sautéing with probably the easiest thing, chicken. Boneless, skinless chicken breast, half of one. And I'm just taking my sharpest knife and cutting horizontally through the breast. Try to make the chicken breasts all the same thickness. You can have the butcher do this for you if you have a good butcher. Uh, but here, what a beautiful piccata that is. Now that is just too thick to call it the real Italian piccata. So take pieces of plastic wrap. Place the breast between, just like this. I always just do it just like that. And get all of your pieces ready at one time. That's one. And you just pound, but gently. People tend to kill the meat, and you don't have to. And I find that the thinner you pound it, the more retraction you're going to get when you cook. So you don't do it so thin that you get retraction. So what is piccata? Piccata is the Italian word for a veal escalope or cutlet. And it's a classic dish of seasoned and floured veal. Uh, we've um, added chicken to the repertoire here in the United States, uh, which is quickly sauteed and served with a sauce made from the pan drippings, plus lemon juice and chopped parsley. It's one of the sautés that I'm gonna show you today that saves you a tremendous amount of time uh, creates a very beautiful presentation and a simple, healthy meal for your family. So now we're going to gently pound. You don't have to kill it. Just get it to spread out. And the slices will be irregular, that's okay. Uh, all of this reminds me of a restaurant where I've had my first veal piccata. Uh, it was a restaurant in New York called Orsini's. All the models ate there. And so during my modeling days, I would go to uh, Orsini's and have delicious veal with a lemony caper sauce and some sauteed spinach. And that was a fabulous lunch. Now you can get all this prepared in advance of your dinner. You can have these in your refrigerator, maybe an hour before cooking. Mm, this looks great. Okay, so now we're ready just to make our dredging. Uh, flour, and dredging flour is basically flour, salt, and pepper. I like to sift my flour, so use about a scoopful of flour. You don't need a lot. I like to sift it just so that there are no lumps. See, there are little lumps. You don't want any lumps whatsoever. And some salt, a teaspoon or so of salt, and some pepper. You can use white pepper or black pepper. I love pepper, so I use it quite a bit. Okay, so ready to dredge. So turn your pan on, add one tablespoon of butter, unsalted, and some olive oil, two tablespoons of olive oil. That looks like one, two. You have to get the pan hot. It's very, very important. Cooking in a pan like this for sautéing doesn't start until over 250 degrees. It can be too hot and burn, which you do not want to do. You don't want to have any black bits in the, uh, in the pan. And the butter helps the chicken to brown, and the oil raises the smoking point so the butter doesn't brown too much before the chicken is cooked through. So if you listen carefully, the sounds from the pan tell you a lot about whether you are doing a good job. The saute should always start with a loud sizzle. So I'm going to dredge my first piece of chicken. Just lightly dredge. Dredge means to coat. Add my chicken. Hear the sizzle? Yes. That's what you want to hear. Have everything else ready before you start sauteing the meat because it just cooks so quickly that you'll be ready to serve your dinner. If the oil's not hot enough, the food can absorb too much oil and become soggy. So already, this is ready to turn. Oh, 
I don't like it dark. I just like it a little bit golden, about three minutes per side. And it's so amazing to me that it really does look like veal. But it's chicken. Now the flour that's coating the meat does allow the meat to brown and get that nice little crispy coating, but not like fried chicken. Have a heated plate ready to accept your piccata. Wasn't that fast? Now there's a little bit of additional fat in here. I'm just going to pour off. Let's see, it's just about as much as I put in. And now add two or three tablespoons of white wine. This is going to loosen any little bits that are on the bottom of the pan. And then we're going to add some lemon juice about three tablespoons of lemon juice. And you cook until the liquid is reduced by approximately half. We're also going to use salt capers. Oh, I love them. And they go very, very nicely with this dish. So just two tablespoons of rinsed capers. If they're in a brine or in salt, rinse them. Get that sauce to a boil. And so you see it's a little bit thick perfect because that's the flour, the residue of the flour thickening the sauce. And it'll get even richer and thicker when you turn this off and stir in two tablespoons of butter. So just stir this in a tablespoon at a time and you can add a little bit of parsley to the sauce. So that sauce is ready to serve. Spoon your sauce right over your cutlet. Serve this with sauteed spinach, broccoli rabe, a risotto if you like. Oh boy, this is fabulous. Chicken piccata. Looks good, doesn't it? One of my favorite dishes is sole a la Meunier, which is a sauteed Dover sole. Meunier is French for Miller's wife, referring to the wife of a flour mill owner. And this classic French dish is traditionally made with a fish like this, which is a flat fish, uh, dark on one side. This is the top of the fish, and that is the bottom. This is what is always down in the sea, and they go like this, swimming through close to the bottom. The fish um, has to be skinned before you cook it. Uh, and this is a, a task that you could leave up to your fishmonger, but if you make a little cut right here, just through this leathery skin. Hold the tail and hold the skin. Use your thumb along the fins. It peels off very nicely. It even comes off the head. So that is the skin of the top and then turn it over and do the same thing to the white part of the skin. So it's very easy to Use my cloth just to start. There. And the flesh under the gray skin is the more beautiful flesh. It's a little bit fatter, too, than the bottom. And that's now you can trim your fins off. The dorsal fin. This will just make a prettier presentation, uh, but you don't ha even have to really think about the presentation because this is all deconstructed before it gets to the table. It's presented and then deconstructed. In some fancy restaurants, they will do that table side. And I like that because then you know that you've gotten the whole fish and not just a filet of sole. So here, this one's ready to go. Rinse it and dry it and dredge it in flour. This one is ready to dredge. Now we're using an instant flour. It is a very super fine flour. Oops, forgot to put a little bit of white pepper and a little bit of salt in the flour. And don't dip the fish into anything other than flour. 
And see, it does adhere nicely, but that very super fine flour is so great. It's a low protein flour that has been processed so it dissolves instantly. And that's why it's known as instant flour. Uh, and coating ensures a um, crisp and golden brown surface on the fish. Now we have a nice hot pan to which I'm going to add three tablespoons of clarified butter. Now the reason I'm using clarified butter is primarily because I don't want the fish to burn and I don't want the butter to burn. The milk solids in the butter have been removed by clarification. Okay, here it goes. Now keep it moving around. Make sure that all parts of it touch the butter and you should cook it for about three minutes per side. I started with the gray skin side down and we will turn it over to finish the cooking on the white side. Uh, true Dover salt only comes from the waters of the Atlantic off the Dover coast of England, so it's difficult to find in the United States. And I think it's time to turn. Oh, utterly wonderful. And now here is what you do next. Add four tablespoons of butter to the pan, get it melted, and then you're gonna spoon this butter right over the fish. And this is enriching this beautiful fish, making it even tastier than it was. This is a rich dish, fancy dish. And uh, now also squeeze the juice of one lemon over the fish. So simple, easy. And now add just a tablespoon of parsley. And there you have it. So now using a fish knife or a large spoon, uh, slice on one side of the backbone. Go right down to the, the bone itself. And then go this way. And then what we're taking is the flesh of the fish off the bone. It makes a very nice fillet, which you then can lift very carefully onto your plate. And now you can flip the fish over and do the same thing on the other side. What you don't want is any bones. So serve this with a little sprinkling of fresh lemon juice on top of the hot fillets and you have sauteed Dover sole Mouillère. Try it, you're really going to love this. Wiener Schnitzel is German for Viennese cutlet, and these wonderful cutlets are another way to saute meat. It's a time-honored Austrian dish believed to be inspired by the Italian methods of cooking Milanese or Scalapini. And what distinguishes Wiener Schnitzel from other sauteed meats is that after the cutlets are cooked, they get a second pan fry in sizzling butter. And we're gonna make pork Wiener Schnitzel, not the typical veal. And this is a little 3 eighths of an inch slice of pork loin, a beautiful cut of meat, um, very little fat and very tender meat. Pounded in between pieces of plastic wrap like this to less than a quarter of an inch thickness. And these are now going to be floured, dipped in egg, and breaded. So sift a quarter of a cup of all-purpose flour into a shallow dish. I like to use these glass pipe dishes because they work so well for this. Uh, some pepper, like a half a teaspoon of black pepper, and a teaspoon of salt. Mix this up. Fingertips are fine. And so that is the first thing you're gonna dip your cutlets into. The next dip is two eggs. 
just break two eggs into another pie dish and break up the yolks with a whisk or a fork. Don't make it too frothy, but make sure the egg whites are mixed well with the yolks. Now, another thing that must be done is a dish full of breadcrumbs, like two cups of fine breadcrumbs. This is just a nice white bread that's been run through the food processor. You could use already prepared panko. You'll get a little bit of a crispier finish on your cutlet. And then in a big pan large enough to hold at least two of these schnitzels, heat some oil. We're using canola oil. Now season the breadcrumbs too with one teaspoon of salt. Everything's nicely seasoned. Take your first cutlet, dredge in flour lightly, then in egg. Fingers are pretty much the only way to go. And then right into the breadcrumbs. I don't like too much breading on my cutlet, but doesn't that look pretty? I think they look really nice. So now this flour creates a dry surface for the egg to cling onto, while the egg serves as the glue for the breadcrumbs. And the crumb coating adds unbeatable texture and flavor. And this is so many people's favorite thing, Wiener Schnitzel. And it's fun to go to Germany or Austria and order this because it is prevalent. And now we're ready to saute. Check the temperature of your oil and make sure it is 350 degrees. You want to hear that sizzle. And then gently lay the cutlet into the oil. You can use a fork, a spatula, but keep the cutlet moving around. Oh, it's already turning a beautiful golden brown. I do have room in this pan for one more. As soon as you see the golden edge, you can turn. It smells very good. Have a tray ready that's lined with paper toweling to drain. Uh, you want to get as much oil off as possible. And if you're going to add another batch of cutlets, just skim the oil with a strainer like this. It really does clean up the oil and takes out any browning bits that will burn and darken the oil. This one looks very good. This is... We'll add our last cutlet. The meat is browning very nicely, and if working in batches, the finished cutlets may uh, be kept in a warm oven at 200 degrees. And as soon as this one's done, we're going to pour off all the oil and add butter to the pan, four tablespoons. That's the second saute in butter. So now right into the hot pan, add four tablespoons of butter. And into the butter, add your cutlets. Pretty side up. You can spoon the butter over or flip them. So you see, this is a rich dish. Serve this with boiled noodles with spetzel, homemade spetzel is very good. So here you have it. Gorgeous, gorgeous Wiener Schnitzel. Just put this on your serving platter and some chopped parsley would be very pretty on the platter. At least one wedge per person of lemon. And lemon, parsley, Wiener Schnitzel, enjoy. Now, the last thing I want to show you how to saute is liver, calves liver. It has a smooth texture, a delicate flavor, and it's very rich in iron, protein, and vitamin A. I start with a slice of calves liver. Generally, the butcher will slice a little less than half an inch thick. The liver would look 
like that when you bring it home. This is like one serving, a large serving. Uh, if it has any impurities, any little veins, you can just cut them out with the point of a knife. And I love to soak the liver in milk for approximately five or six hours. Buy it the day you're going to serve it. It will stay a day in the refrigerator, but I wouldn't suggest any longer than that. And just cover it with whole milk and put it back in the refrigerator covered to further enhance its tenderness and its flavor. So we're almost ready to start cooking our liver. It's been soaking in milk and you need two tablespoons of a neutral oil like a safflower oil or a canola oil and two tablespoons of unsalted butter. This is the oil in which to saute the liver. Now for the onions, which go very, very nicely with the liver, uh, approximately a two tablespoon piece of butter. Melt that quickly and put your onions in with a little bit of salt and pepper. Onions just are fantastic with liver. I don't know who thought of it, but it works really well. So get your oil and butter nice and hot, and then dry the slices of liver and some paper toweling. I'm using that ultra fine flour again. Some salt, some pepper. And then dry your liver slices. I just got back from Morocco, and uh, they eat a lot of liver, a lot of what they call offal. Okay, so once dried, dredge in flour, and then add to the pan. You can hear the little tiny bit of sizzling going on. This cooks very, very quickly, and so watch it, adjust the heat. You don't want to burn the liver. And as we did with all the other sauteing, keep moving the meat around in the pan. You can serve liver with onions or you can serve it with sauteed sage, which I also adore. It's time to flip the liver. Perfect. You see it browns evenly and lightly and very quick. And now I'm just chiffonading the sage leaves, getting them into thin strips. And we can just put those into the pan. Pretty much done, and the onions look very good. Make sure you season the onions with salt and pepper. And time to plate. Mm, I want this piece for myself. So, plate up with some onions. So if you're looking for your dose of iron, here's a good way to get it. And here's a slight Italian twist with the calf's liver. In case you don't want to have onions, just saute a little bit of that sage. So here you have liver two ways, but cooked one way. And I do hope you've enjoyed this lesson on sautéing. It's a quick yet simple method of creating flavorful meals for your family and friends. And join me again next time on Martha's Cooking School.